Canadian fiction is a strange thing. Usually it's dark and depressing and twisted, and Dennis Foon's The Dirt Eaters is no exception. I mean, it has creepy cults, child sacrifice, post-apocalyptic nuclear societies, good world building, and fantasy elements. I first found this book when I was around 11 or 12, and I remember really liking it. But now, years later, at 25, I found that I remember absolutely nothing about it. Alexander gave it to me at the beginning of high school, and I remember reading it and liking it, but it's the darndest thing. I can't remember a thing about it either. Reading this book again was like taking an interesting walk through the building blocks of my psyche. So, if you're wondering what types of crazy books Canadians fed their kids in the 90s, here it is! The Dirt Eaters. The pacifist village of Long Light was destroyed by raiders, and Rowan and his sister Stowe are the only ones to survive. Stowe is taken by the raiders to the city, but Rowan is picked up by the cult of the friend. Creepy cult is creepy! Sure, they feed Rowan and teach him hand-to-hand -hand combat, but then they want him to take this rock up a mountain, and then they're like, hey, slit this guy's throat as an initiation ritual, and uh, it just kind of turns into this whole, like, thing. Not to mention, Rowan finds out that the cult of the friend were the raiders who slaughtered his village. So Rowan nearly kills their leader, Saint, and then runs off into the wasteland. There he encounters the Dirt Eaters. They're dreamwalkers who tell Rowan that he has a giant destiny which they will help him fulfill. He's also looking for a way to free his sister from the city because they're turning her into evil Stowe who rips children's organs out with her bare hands. The biggest thing about this book is the world building. Post-apocalyptic nuclear society where everything is so destroyed because of all the poisons and chemicals dumped on the land that large areas of it are uninhabitable. Not only that, but whole new species of flora and fauna have developed because of the pollution, like the nether vines, which have thorns that are so deadly that if you don't remove all of the poison from a small little prick, you will die a horrible, painful death months down the line. Or more ticks. Insects that will swarm you, and then the second worst pain you will ever feel is when they burrow their way under your skin. The first worst pain that you will ever feel is when they lay their eggs under your skin and their larvae eat their way out. And then you die. That's not even mentioning the epic wastelands, the hollow forests, toxic lakes, and meadows of deadly flowers. Possibly even worse are the people. The people of the city who are, you know, cutting up children and other atrocities, luring them in with ice cream to keep them docile. Or the pale blood drinkers who cut off their ears, sharpen their teeth, and ride around in packs, drinking people dry. This premise is by no means new. I guess when a writer is looking to make a society shocking, they immediately turn to child murderers. Because <gasps> the horror. Yes, in real life it is horrifying, but in fiction it's usually gratuitous. Hell, even the luring kids in with ice cream has been done before. What will it be? Ice cream! Yay, ice cream! So inside my little ears! We've seen post-apocalyptic societies up and down. Even the original Mad Max predates this book. And deadly plants mutating isn't new either. Definitely predated by movies like Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. No, what somehow ties this book together and makes it seem like something new is the fantasy elements in the Dirt Eaters. Rowan is constantly dreaming of the being called Dirt Eaters, and they train him in his sleep, they warn him of danger, they give him directions, and sometimes he even sees them when he's awake. And there's the overarching Chosen One narrative that also ties it further into the fantasy genre. Those fantasy elements, combined with the fact that this book might actually give its intended audience nightmares, is one of the things that makes it really unique. Rowan isn't the most exciting hero in the world, but it's his inner struggle between the peaceful teachings of his village and the realities of the world that make him interesting. And then there's Lumpy, a horribly disfigured character, which is something you don't often see in YA. He looks as bad as the thing thinks he looks. And there is no hope to cure his scars. Lumpy was attacked by Mortix, and he is not going to turn into a beautiful butterfly. But Lumpy is resourceful and smart and a good friend for Roan. I just want to know, what the hell's his real name? Because I highly doubt his parents were like, Oh yes, what a perfect baby boy. What should we call him, father? I don't know, mother, but you're always so poetic with names. Ah yes, I've got it, father. We shall call him... Lumpy. The last character of note is the leader of the cult of the friend, Saint. Yeah, his name is Saint. I would totally trust a stranger I met trying to recruit me into a cult if his name was Saint. 
yeah, he's trying to do good, but he is violent and he's beholden to the city. He's also a great foil for Rowan because they ultimately have the same goals, but they go about it so differently. When I was a kid, I remember having no sympathy for him. He was the villain and he was a good one and I really disliked him. But now, this time around, he got me, and I got him, and his sincerity. Even if he was going about his entire plan in a really screwed up way, you know, like murdering Rowan's entire village and all. Denon's Foon has a cut and dry writing style. I figured out that he's written a lot of successful plays, which explains it. He lays things out well, but he doesn't mince with words or get extremely descriptive about much. Another writer would have had a lot of trouble pulling off the dry angle, but Foon's narrative is interesting enough to pull it off. So yeah, child murderers, toxic fauna, nuclear wastelands, and blood drinkers. That's what Canadians raise their children on. It's no wonder Canadians are the way they are. Anyways, despite the fact that elements of the Dirt Eaters have been done before, blending it with fantasy elements and then making it truly terrifying gives this book an edge. If you're looking for a book that does post-apocalyptic differently, this is it. It's definitely a lesser known YA novel, and it probably shouldn't be. So if you have some time, check it out. We will eventually do a review on the sequel, Free Walker.